Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are continuing our almond oat making theme with this lovely almond oat natural body lotion. As far as lotion formulations go, this one has a pretty short ingredient list with nine ingredients. I would say that five or six ingredients is generally your bare minimum for a lotion. So nine uh, is a little bit more than the bare minimum, but uh, there's certainly a lot of room to go up from nine, but not a lot of room to go down. If you would like to learn more about lotion formulation, make sure you check out the super simple moisturizing lotion formulation I shared last June, June of 2020. Both the video and the partner blog posts have a lot of really helpful information in them about lotion making and formulation. So the oaty part of this formulation comes from some soothing colloidal oatmeal and from some lovely moisturizing hydrolyzed oat protein. The almondy parts of this product are the primary oil in the formulation, which is sweet almond oil, though that's very easy to swap out if you have a nut allergy, and benzyl alcohol, which is an element of our preservative that smells like almonds. And so we do get a bit of soft oaty scent from the colloidal oatmeal, and then we get a little bit of almondy, marzipan-y scent from that element of our preservative. And so we get a very soft almond oat scent, which I think is very, very cool. Speaking of our preservative, it is GeoGuard ECT. So if you wanna learn more about this, visit humblebeeandme.com slash preservatives. Uh, this preservative is sold under a variety of different trade names. So make sure you are looking at the inky so you know what you are getting. Making this formulation is really quite easy. If you've ever made a lotion before, I don't think you'll have any issues. And when made as written, the pH comes out to a great level for our natural preservative. So even if you don't have a pH meter to test the pH of this formulation, if you make it as written, I would be quite confident that the pH would come out to where we need it to be. If you'd like to read more discussion of the pH of this formulation, please make sure you are reading the blog post linked in the description box below. You'll also find tons of other great helpful information down there, including information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, links to places to buy all the ingredients and a whole lot more, but yeah. I think that is enough chat, so let's get started. We'll begin by combining the ingredients for our heated oil phase in a beaker that you can fit your immersion blender into. We'll start with our emulsifier. So we'll need three and a half grams of Redemulse SCG. So this is an anionic natural emulsifier. It's sold under quite a few different names, including emulsimulse and ecomulse depending on where you're shopping. So make sure you're looking it up in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia to grab the inky and see a list of the different names that I found for it. You'll need 10 grams sweet almond oil, though if you don't have this or if you're allergic to nuts, there's lots of things you could use instead. So make sure you look that up in the blog post linked in the description box below this video. Two grams subtle alcohol. So this gives the finished project a really gorgeous, silky viscosity. And our last ingredient is two grams of colloidal oatmeal. So this is a lovely skin soothing ingredient. Make sure you look it up in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia to learn more. Our heated water phase is really, really simple in keeping with, you know, trying to keep this formulation on the simpler side. So in this small beaker, I already have 68.2 grams of distilled water. And to that, I'm going to add 10 grams vegetable glycerin. So vegetable glycerin is a gorgeous, inexpensive humectant that helps moisturize the skin. I use it in pretty much everything and I would consider it to be an absolute must have ingredient for formulating your own skincare and hair care products. Before we heat our phases, I'm going to weigh the water phase and note that weight. And so this allows us to replace any water lost to evaporation during heating. So to heat everything through, I'm going to use a water bath. This is a wide flat bottom saute pan that has about an inch or three centimeters of water in the bottom of it. And I'm just gonna go pop this on the stove top over medium heat until everything in our oil phase has melted. Though keep in mind the um, colloidal oatmeal is not going to melt. You'll just sort of see that as a, a hazy powder, but the emulsifier and the subtle alcohol will melt. And then the water phase will be the same temperature and then we will be ready to uh, blendy blendy. Once everything has heated through and melted, you can remove your pan from the heat. So the first thing we're going to do is top up our water phase. I'll just dry that off. 
and then pop that on the scale. Grab a bit of preheated distilled water and top that back up to the number we wrote down earlier. And now we need to blend it, so we'll grab our immersion blender here and blend away. See, this is already starting to thicken up nicely uh, and it smells softly of oats which I really like it's just a, a subtle oaty scent from that uh, the colloidal oatmeal so I'm just gonna clean off our immersion blender head here set it aside and give this lotion a stir and then we're just going to leave it to cool for a wee while as it is still quite hot All right, I'll see you in about five minutes. All right, so it has been about five minutes. Oh, and this is looking absolutely lovely. Check out that silky gorgeousness. This is actually cooling down quite quickly as well. It's not quite cool enough, but it seems to be you know, very well blended and coming along nicely. So I'm just going to set this aside and we're going to uh, weigh out our cooldown phase. So this is our cooldown phase, just three ingredients. We have our antioxidant, vitamin E, we've got some hydrolyzed oat protein in keeping with our almond oat theme. We have our natural preservative, this is GeoGuard ECT. So I'll need 0.3 grams uh, vitamin E, three grams hydrolyzed oat protein, and for substitutions, please make sure you're reading the blog post, but this is a gorgeous, moisturizing ingredient really helps keep the skin soft and happy for longer. And then for the preservative, we'll need one gram of this. And so something that's I think quite interesting about this preservative is it does have a slight uh, sort of almondy smell because it contains benzyl alcohol. And so that is a little, you know, it does come through in the final product. And so it combines with the oat scent from the colloidal oatmeal and gives us that almond oat scent profile in a really neat sort of synergistic all-natural way. I think it's very cool. Once the lotion has cooled down to room temperature, we're going to combine the cool down phase and the lotion. So we'll begin by putting a dollop of the lotion into the little dish with the cool down phase. We'll grab a little wire whisk and whisk to combine. I like to do a little bit of this kind of motion, this kind of cutting it in before starting to whisk more sort of enthusiastically to uh, prevent mess. I find that if you go right in and, wah, and then you tend to sort of spray some of the thinner liquids out of the bowl. And once that's all combined, we will pop it back into the parent batch. stir to combine. So our next step is testing the pH of our formulation. So the first step in that is making a 10% dilution. So I'm going to weigh two grams of product into this little beaker. And if you want to learn more about this, please make sure you're looking up pH meter in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia. I have linked to some relevant further reading on pH testing and why we make a dilution because it does seem rather counterintuitive. And now we're going to add enough distilled water to total 20 grams. So two grams out of 20 equals a 10% solution. Once you have your nice little diluted testing solution, we are ready to test. So I'm just gonna grab our pH meter here. So this is my pH meter from Apera. If you look it up in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia, just under pH meter and in the equipment section, you can learn more about it. Uh, so I'm just gonna rinse that off with a bit of distilled water. Gently dry it off with a bit of paper towel. Turn it on and then pop it into our little testing solution. And then we wait to get a little happy face. All right, 4.4, 4.45, kind of hovering around 
there, but that's good. If you'd like to read more discussion about the pH of this formulation, make sure you are reading the partner blog post linked in the description box below. As always, there is tons of other great information there. Rinse that off, gently dry it off, pop it back in storage solution until I need it again. Once we know that our pH is all happy and good, we can package it up. So for packaging, I'm going to use this little pump top bottle from Yellow Bee. This was a gift. I packaged an earlier version of this formulation in one of Yellow Bee's airless pump top tubes as well, and I quite like that. Um, but yeah, this one I'm just gonna pop in this one. So with these pumps, you do want to uh, do this part, spring the pump before it goes in here, because if you can't grasp the main shaft of it, you can't unscrew it. If you're holding this part, the whole thing, as you can see, it just spins. So you need to pop it before you fill it. But to fill it, I'm going to use a syringe. So just pop that in here. You could definitely use a funnel as well. This is just like a vintage glass jar that, gosh, I, I think I, I think this was my grandmother's. I've, I've had it for years. And just using it to hold the syringe upright, slowly blurping and blopping the lotion in there. I think this plunger might be on its way out. I've you know, only reused it a couple hundred times. <laughs> so make sure you're leaving room for uh, air to escape down here, otherwise you're gonna have some issues there we go I think this the rubber gasket on this plunger is starting to be misshapen but I think I've been using this syringe since I don't know like 2016 or something so I can probably replace it I get a lot of questions about where I bought these syringes they were a special order from Lee Valley tools here in Canada um, back in like uh, Black Friday of, yeah, maybe 2016. So not super helpful. They don't usually sell them and they do not have them now. But uh, Ivan from Yellow Bee told me one of his customers recommended using one of those like meat juice injection syringes. Uh, and says that, you know, they're readily available at, at like kitchen stores and on Amazon and whatnot. And they work really well. All right. Yeah, you're definitely destined for the recycling bin later. Yeah, I'm sometimes asked why I don't use like piping bags for this sort of work and why I prefer syringes. And the fact that, you know, I've been using this same syringe and plunger for probably five years. That's why. Um, even if you can, you know, wash out uh, a soft plastic bag and, and get more than one use out of it, I highly doubt you're going to get five years of use out of it. And I've been able to, you know, I can just send the syringe through my dishwasher, works a treat. Uh, if you're hand washing it, or if it needs an extra scrub, you know, a bottle brush works really well. that's about as full as I can get this. You can see that there's still a bit of room in the neck, but if we look at kind of the bulk of the pump, we might have already pushed it too far. Nope, that worked, but I definitely felt a little bit of bloop, a little bit of buoyant kind of pushback, so I think that is about as uh, close as that was going to uh, get. For a bit of an application demo, I'll just grab some off of our spatula. It's really very spreadable, quite lightweight. You can see there's not really any noticeable soaping. Got a gorgeous, soft, oaty, almondy scent there from the colloidal oatmeal and from our preservative. Leaves the skin feeling great, really moisturized. Just, yeah, lovely. And there we are. So we just made a gorgeous almond oat natural body lotion. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you are reading that partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. You'll find a lot more helpful information in that post, information on substitutions, 
scaling, shelf life, links to places to buy all the ingredients, discussion of pH, information on using different preservatives, just tons and tons and tons of great information. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and I'll see you next time.